<laughs> these are the last couple of hives. I just had a few of these. These are just hanging around my house, really. But they might as well join the fray out there at the almond blossom. So we're gonna just strap them up and take them out there this morning. As per normal, because we get distracted with everything else that's going on, with trying to keep this show together for you guys, I get a little bit behind, so it's all good though. Whoever who invented this shit was pretty clever, the old hive lock. That had to be a farmer dude, I reckon. And then they got manufactured. Anybody out there in Bean Land know who actually came up with the hive lock? Mind you, I suppose I should just Google that shit myself. But where would be the fun in that? Tom bong! Right, so. Gotta go and find another strap. Hold on. <laughs> Look. Ta da! <laughs> this is what happens when they're faithfully put back. <sighs> Now, youngsters out there, when your dad says to put shit away so you can find it next time, start to learn that crap early, because it's a good option. Because I never know where shit is. <laughs> oh. Oh. Being that we're doing this in the morning, so is that we've got some daylight to show you guys what goes on. I've shut the little doors on my paradise box. Of course, these ladies were just out for a little bit of a pee in the morning, you know, when you wake up first up, you gotta go have a little tinkle. So they've come back from that and they've gone, Damn, the bloody door shut. You imagine coming back from the bathroom and you can't get back into bed. That'd be a bit rough, wouldn't it? But if I open the door, then there'll be 20 more out here, so we might just leave them on the outside. Whew. Oh, far out. I was just having a bit of a cackle to myself. Here we are picking up our four bee boxes. There's, there's like bloody road trains of bees running around the Riverland at the minute for Almond Blossom. If you're watching this and you happen to have a big truck, and lots and lots of bee boxes. Don't judge me too harshly, this is just the tail end little bit. That might have been the little cord we cut, I reckon. The little indicator light, because this side's not too big. <sighs> so we thought we'd give our little cap tail if a crack again for this little project. We met Bee Louie over there at the field day, or at the Congress, or whatever it was called. He's a pretty cool dude. Anyway, that's just his little invention. He's got a few of these. He's got a crank handle one, a battery one. I'm thinking about actually getting the one that hasn't got a that hasn't got the battery drive, it's just got the crank handle, and then I could have that on the trailer. So when you lift them up and you won't have to put the loader up and down. But anyway, I reckon it's a pretty cool contraption. <laughs> cool thing about this, I don't even have to make sound effects, they make their own. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently according to the directions, you don't need to give this a hit, you can just loosen the handle off correctly and then they just slide out nice and easy. <laughs> I reckon try doing that with a, with it. Try doing this in a normal bee, without a bee suit. If you were using normal bloody boxes and see how you get on. Well, I reckon we'd had our asses stung off. So this is another advantage of these paradise boxes. They're pretty bloody sealed. I didn't like that idea. <laughs> It's a bit of a mystery, isn't it, really? If you're wondering I'm, why I've changed vehicles, I'm actually giving my dad's you to run because he's been in the shed while he's been sick for the last couple of years. It's been sitting around, not doing too much, and I thought it needed a drive. And um, yeah, you know, cause, and thank you to all you guys out there that sent your sympathies along and your support, and it was much appreciated. You know, he was a champion dude. You might only see him once on the show, I reckon. Of course, people out there when, you know, you probably understand if you've lost a father or a, or a parent, or in my case, I've lost a child and a parent, which is kind of messed up. But it's really beautiful, the moments you have. And I think it's important to remember that if you've still got your parents alive, go around and have a cup of tea with them and tell them that you love them. Because, you know, when they're gone, you can't do that. I spent the last six months saying goodbye to my dad and I cherish every memory and every moment that we spent together. So I think if it's possible, to reconcile with your loved ones, do that while they're still kicking. Well, 
Well, as I said before, we're um, just using these last four little hives just to show you what's going on here in pollination land. Because normally this is done in the blooming dark, and of course, filming stuff in the dark isn't all that flash. I guess with red lights, you might be able to get away with it, but our budget doesn't stretch to too much lighting. <laughs> you know, we're, we're doing this on a shoestring, really. But anyway, we thought we'd show you what's going on. The reason the almond industry is very dependent on bee pollination is because the almond pollen is way too heavy. And the other thing that happens is it's pretty cold time of year, really. So this is still in the what, last month of winter. So it's still pretty bloody fresh. So you only get probably four to five hours a day on a good day, and maybe one hour on a shit day, that the ladies get out and have a bit of a fossick and get hold of the, some of this pollen. And so it's really a really probably almost accidental that the bees do the pollinating because they go on this variety, which has male and female um, pollen, I guess you'd call it. I don't know, it's probably called something else. Anyway, it has the male and female parts of the different pollen, but it can't pollinate itself, so it's got to get carried to a different tree by the bee so it can get cross-pollinated. So I don't know, that's pretty bloody cool of nature, I reckon. So, so the plants had to figure out a way to get the bees attracted. So they made this pretty smelling, pretty looking stuff to attract the ladies. So pollination of the almonds are basically the month of August, but pretty much the last couple of weeks when the um, the, the newer varieties have bred or well, non and the other varieties now that they've bred a, a flower a little bit later to try and get a bit nicer weather. But um, some of these old, I've got a couple of rows of old school ones that flower a little bit earlier, that's why these are out a bit further. But yeah, so basically August here, and in America it's the opposite end. So, because our summer's their winter and their women's out, winter is our summer. So here we are, the sun's up, the ladies are trapped, no bee suit. You know, I don't know, if we don't get stung, <laughs> We'll be pretty spectacular, I reckon. We'll find out how we get on. Opening the door, that could be interesting, but I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe, maybe a bloke might put his bee suit on after he unties this stuff, because it'd be just my luck that something stupid will happen. You know, I don't know, bloody little move or, because they're, they would not be impressed <laughs> at the minute. What I'm saying, if I had another lifter, I wouldn't have to do that bit. <sighs> yeah, <sighs> gosh, you wouldn't believe it. We just had a phone call from a dude in Alice Springs that's having a bit of a bee crisis, and we've got, um, you know, we've got a lot of requests to do a heaps more with this show, which I think we've hit a bit of a um, sweet spot in the audience and you guys that are enjoying us. But man, we're both. We've both got full-time careers other than this show, so but we'd love to do more, but we've got to figure out how to fund it. And so, hell, if you want to throw $2 into the Patreon support page, you never know where we might take this show. And if you feel so inclined to actually give us a couple of dollars on the Patreon supporting page, we're going to give you some extra footage. And, you know, so you get to see some cool behind the scenes. Actually, last night on the Q&A, one, one, one of the lasses said, you actually might even, we might even run a few blooper rolls, which would be pretty, pretty messed up. And a shout out to all the guys that are supporting us on Patreon already. You know, you're making it happen. And if you're enjoying the show, why not join them and support us? My little bee Louie. I like the fact it's got a reversing beat. You know, as if you, how, how cool is that little fork? You gotta love bloody, what is it called? Occupational health and safety or whatever it's called. Had to have a beeper on his friggin' battery powered forklift trolley thing as if you'd run yourself over honestly <laughs> yeah fair enough on a big fork lift you need it to go beep beep so you don't run the neighbors over but shit <laughs> Okay, now for the big reveal. Hey, actually, it's the big release, really, isn't it? Well, it's not really a big release, it's only four boxes, but still, 
Anyway, everyone counts. <laughs> Blue ladies. <laughs> Hello, like. Where the hell are we? <laughs> That's a good seal. See how when you open it up, how quick they're all into it. I don't think they're over happy with us, but they're going to be in a minute when they figure out where they just ended up. Because they'll be out going, shit, yeah, it's paradise. Let's get a guts full of pollen. <laughs> oh, actually, let's get a leg full of pollen. <laughs> Safely arrived. The ladies are all getting a, having a little bit of an orientation flight. Thing is, they won't have to go too far to find something to nibble on around here. I mean, we've got a whole blooming orchard full of flowers, so hopefully they get a little bit of a boost, a little bit of pollen, a little... Almonds have got a little bit of nectar. They won't get a honey flow, but there's a little bit of nectar on them. So, um, yeah, it's a good start to the season and roll on spring. Here comes the madness. This is what happens here in Oz or every around, anywhere else where you grow almonds. This is the start of the excitement. So hopefully some of these will turn into almonds. You know, hell, all those blossoms can't turn into almonds, otherwise the tree would collapse. But the idea is our little ladies come along here and they get onto this little bit. See that little end parts? That's where all the pollen is. And they come along and they nibble on that. Or they go inside the flower to get some nectar. Either way, they get the pollen stuck to them. And then they fly off to another flower. So they take the boy pollen from there and they insert it into the girl pollen. And I don't think they intend to do that, but the tree knows it needs to happen. And then us poor silly almond growers, we hope we actually get some money out of all this madness. So that's probably not a real scientific um, explanation, but I just reckon nature is fascinating. You know, the bees need the pollen and the nectar. The trees, maybe, I don't know, did the trees figure that shit out and turn up with this pretty flower and nectar and pollen so that it could all work together? Kind of thinking the other day about the only thing that doesn't fit into the system in the planet is us people, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>